Australian mathematical literacy skills has declined more steeply and consistently than nearly any other country besides Finland. This downward trend has been greatest in maths compared to any other subject. This is according to a new report where a large reason for this is because teachers in Australia are regularly misinformed about how students should be learning and are unsure about what actually works in the classroom since they're only basing it off the curriculum. I will cover why this may be happening, how this affects Australian students in particular, and what parents and students can do to combat this problematic situation. Let's get into it. A new report from the Centre of Independent Studies has revealed that math teachers should ditch modern practices or fads and focus instead on proven teaching methods such as using clear and detailed instruction. The new report titled Myths are Undermining Maths Teaching states that teachers are often misinformed about what is effective in the classroom and how students should actually be learning. We can learn from the data that students who are taught incorrectly and are behind early on in their school years tend to stay behind. Maths being the subject that builds on prior year's knowledge, so it's important to ensure that every year students are on top of all the concepts that they need to learn. Otherwise, it'll be a huge pain for them to catch up since you cannot skip corners with this subject compared to other subjects like PDHPE and visual arts where the knowledge that you learn from a previous year doesn't translate to the next year. In the report, it even states that your performance in maths at age five can predict later maths performance all the way to age 15. That means the patterns from an early age is very difficult to break and if you embrace maths early on and continue to do so, this will also appear in your results where students will have a much higher result. So if you are performing very poorly at age five in maths, it has a trend to also make you potentially perform underwhelmingly by the time you're age 15. Unfortunately, good Australian teachers are getting scarce and more rarer, and we can see that students' mathematical literacy skills has declined steeply and consistently, even on an international stage. Students in 2003 were much better in terms of their performance than students currently in 2018 in math subjects, which is not a good sign to see as a country in Australia. We want to be improving over time, not getting worse. We can see that from the graph on the screen here, that the average across the countries over time is getting better, where the line in blue is representing the students here in New South Wales. The report outlines several myths where Australian teachers believe and follow, where I'll break down each of those myths and why they should not be followed according to this report. The first myth being that time assessments can cause maths anxiety. So that is why students may not like studying maths. This is personally quite ridiculous because if students are not used to timed assessments, how can they perform well when they are given an exam? All exams in high school are timed and most math exams in primary school are as well. If we look at the opportunity class exam or the selective exam or even the HAST exam here in New South Wales, they're all timed. So when practicing questions and concepts, but never doing it in, in terms of a timed supervision, it's not going to be very beneficial for students in terms of their learning outcomes. Students who can remember how to solve math problems using their working memory and under pressure will more likely be more successful in problem solving. Capturing how many questions are correct is the basis of the Australian curriculum to see how students are progressing over time. By incorporating a time component in practice and in the class, Classroom and using goal setting such as encouraging students to see whether they can beat their previous marks from a past exam, students can see if they are improving overall. If teachers are never doing time assessments and they're just teaching a concept, it's very hard for them to differentiate between the students who actually understand the concepts and are able to apply it, or the students who are just very quiet and when you ask them if they get it, they say they do, but they actually do not. So that is why this myth is to me quite problematic because there needs to be formal assessments. It can't just be, okay, we can skip this or oh, I think that student is quite smart. They should be fine here. We should always keep doing these assessments and we should do regular assessments, especially 
when preparing for high school. The second myth that I want to cover is that the report outlines students should not be taught algorithms in maths. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step solution or rule that maths has to follow. Some teachers believe that they should not be taught algorithms but instead be encouraged to make mental relationships to know what is going on. Some teachers and educators, according to the report, are saying as long as you can solve the problem, we don't mind what way you do it. They are dissuading students to memorize formulas and believe that memorizing and if they just learn algorithms and formulas, they'll not be able to solve questions, especially if they're worded differently. This is the case for OC and selective exams where many of the questions use maths that students should know based on the syllabus and curriculum but because it is phrased in a different way they're not able to get the question correct. While this logic may hold true in this example I believe that algorithms and memorizing certain rules has a central place here in Australia and for our students still. I like to think that the only way to learn times tables really effectively and efficiently is by memorizing it. That is something that we've worked and done for our students because there's no necessary trick to it. Teachers may introduce drawing and bundling up together but we may find that memorizing up to the 10 times tables is very effective as it makes maths in the subsequent years much more easier. You don't see students in year four and year three drawing sticks, three sticks and then grouping them up into four little bundles to represent three times four. That's something they may do in kindergarten or year one, but definitely not in year three or four. It's just not practical for you to draw that for just knowing and finding out the answer for three times four. That is why memorizing or knowing algorithms in this circumstance is actually quite useful. Students will eventually be able to remember it anyway, so instead of making them draw it, you can encourage them to memorize it from the get-go. For problems that are displayed differently, inquiry learning and knowing the relationship of what the question is actually asking Asking will be very helpful in this case. I think this myth of never teaching algorithms or not teaching them at all or using memorizing should actually be debunked and it should always be incorporated to a degree. Should you memorize everything? Of course not in terms of math but there are things that you can definitely memorize. I reckon uh, the formulas, like if you know the rule to uh, know the area of a circle, or the perimeter of a square, those are important things just for you to memorize. There's no point in you knowing the mental relationships between the, the length and the sides and sort of seeing that or just not remembering it at all. The third myth that Australian educators are believing and using is that people should just use inquiry-based learning. This is learning that involves teachers starting with a range of scenarios, questions and problems for students to navigate instead of presenting information or explicit instruction on how to solve it. The report argues that explicitly teaching students rules and math skills will encourage more independent practice and a higher application in skills. Getting students to understand the real world application of maths is great for students to learn and appreciate the subject. However, it should not and cannot always be done. Students need to use adaptive thinking and use a blend of both teaching models. Inquiry-based learning so that students can see that math is used to calculate percentages of certain products in the store is going to be very helpful as they'll actually know how much they are saving. Although explicit learning where we are taking students through step-by-step -step approach in how to solve these questions is equally just as important to increase their overall marking in terms of assessments and their standard and the fundamentals in math principles. We have had too many teachers focus more on the former because they think that if students like math then they'll generally get better in it but there needs to be a blend of both because if you're just making them really like math in terms of the practical side in terms of the real world application of it and not going to able to answer the more complex math problems that really has quite are difficult to apply to the real world and we can see that if we try to only focus on them liking math their scores have regressed over the years it is generally the younger teachers as well who believe these myths that I've mentioned and because they think that newer methods are somewhat better but that's not necessarily true because some, if they believe that time assessments can induce stress, algorithms and memorizing is not very effective and then inquiry based learning is really really good, I kind of like to capitalize it based on this quote from Phil Waldron who is the head of mathematics at North Holm Grammar School where he states in this quote, the evidence suggests that what these older staff members were doing is in fact the best way. We know that students who do not know their basics or fundamentals fall further behind. 
Parents can combat this by routinely checking their child's performance in math and touching base with their teacher. If they are behind, they should take study more seriously and not be afraid to learn math in a more traditional way. We hear students keep saying, my teacher taught me this way, I was not taught that way, when parents try to help. Acknowledge their comments, but tell them that the way that you teach them is also effective and can also work. Most of the time, the students are just making excuses anyway because explicit instruction works quite effectively based on the literature, and if you have a clear step-by-step -step formula, it will benefit. Obviously, if you are unsure about what you learned in terms of uh, these math concepts or how to solve these questions from back when you were much younger, then that's not going to work. But if it consistently answers the question and it makes sense, then obviously you can actually teach a child that way. Make sure you get a math teacher to assist if you can't help yourself, whether it be due to time constraints or something else entirely. Our personal teaching system is filled with teachers who are overworked, underpaid and are just not too good at what they do because of a lack of training here in Australia. We can see this in the results where in Australia compared to the world or global stage, our teachers are one of the worst trained on an international level. We can see on the screen that teachers in year four spend the most amount of time in maths in teaching students maths, yet they have the least qualifications and training, which is why the results are the lowest. The analysis also shows that almost a quarter of year eight students were taught maths by teachers who were not trained in it compared with 10% internationally. This is something I experienced even attending a selective high school, which is one of the more academically forward schools here in New South Wales in terms of their options being Penrith, where my year seven teacher was a PDHPE teacher, Mr. Newell. I remember that even he was a bit embarrassed teaching the subject of math. And although I was personally fine with it back in year seven, there were at times where I was kind of questioning it because all the other year seven classes had a legitimate math teacher. But I think it didn't really affect us because our standard of math was already quite high compared to the rest of the high schools. I can easily imagine students who did not attend selective high schools or private schools or top high schools in general here in New South Wales will fall behind as they are taught by math teachers who have a low standard or they are just given another teacher from a different faculty due to staffing issues. And if you have a look in the news today, the number of qualified teachers, the number of teachers we have in our schools is a very big problem. The content that is taught in high schools is all under the premise that students have learned a certain amount by the time they arrive to that stage. Although we know that this is not necessarily true, since primary school teachers are expected to teach a range of different subjects. If I had to teach all four subjects of the selective exam, for instance, or multiple subjects in high school, it is a no-brainer that the quality of the teaching that I provide will drop. It doesn't matter if I'm a fantastic English teacher, if you told me to also teach science, me teaching science would not necessarily be very good, even if I follow a similar approach. Primary school teachers have to do that where they teach multiple different subjects, so it is not a surprise that the results in primary are getting worse since the entire way the classrooms is set up here in Australia is a little bit flawed. In conclusion, we know that the primary school and high school teachers do not like teaching maths very much and are not confident in teaching maths or do not necessarily teach maths very well. They believe in myths that may make sense theoretically to them, but practically it does not work. Students' results have worsened over the years and Australia is now below average on an international level. That is also a big reason why more and more parents are opting for additional assistance in the forms of choosing the particular school that their child attends, or getting tutoring, or being a lot more involved in their education by having a chat with a teacher and not just in their parent-teacher interview. I'd like to give a shout out to the report where I mentioned quite a few few of my uh, topics that I mentioned today called myths that undermine maths teaching that was published in August 2022 so these are a recent study by Sarah Powell and her team because a lot of my findings I shared today was from there if you like this video definitely like it support the channel as much as you can if you haven't subscribed what are you doing make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video bye